Well, hello there, YouTubers. This is Just Gene 83 coming to you with reloading from the hot pot. I wanted to show you a little something today. This is my Canik TP9 SF 9mm, made in Turkey. I don't get into politics. If I got into politics, I wouldn't shoot a Glock because they're made in Austria, where Adolf Hitler's from. So we don't get into that. We don't care. What we care about is a quality product. That's what we care about is a quality product. This firearm here has served me very well. I've had it for over a year and a half now. I stopped counting rounds after over 2,000. I got to like 21, 2200. I've got it on paper somewhere. I stopped counting. I just shot the thing. And I know a conservative estimate. Uh, I, I bet I've put uh, 8,000 rounds through it at least. Uh, being a reloader, I have ammunition all the time, <laughs> all the time, hence my, uh, my zombie bullets. I love my zombie bullets. Matter of fact, I'm going to shoot a zombie match uh, next month at one of the local gun ranges is having a little zombie event. So I'm, I'm going to go shoot it and kill some paper zombie targets. But I want to do a little, uh, little tabletop review of this, just long term review. It is clear, it is empty. I don't want to shoot anybody out there in YouTube land. Shoot you through your screen. Never gonna happen, but everybody worries about it. So this pistol, all the specifications are available on other videos. This is my impression of it long term. Long term, year and a half. Is that really long? Nah. No. But it is for me to own one pistol because I gotta really like it if I'm gonna keep the thing around for a year and a half. Um, unlike some of my other pistols which have had a very short life in my hands. Um, some revolvers, some striker fires, some hammer fires that I just do not own anymore because well I just really didn't care to shoot them. You know, they pinched my fingers or they weren't comfortable in the hand grip. Um, inaccuracy, failures to feed, failures to extract, stove piping, and a couple top brand names um, have actually made it their way back to the gun store where I got them at just because I don't want to deal with their problems. And one being the one of the biggest manufacturers out there, which I will not name, but the 10 millimeter version I had of it went back to the gun store after several hundred rounds because of magazine drops, failures to feed, failures to eject. And everybody kept, well, send it back, send it back. It's like, I shouldn't have to send it back. I shouldn't have to send it back. It should be, you know, you're a top name manufacturer. You, you can't produce a firearm that doesn't have problems. Sorry about your luck. Spend my money elsewhere. But this one has gotten more and more reliable as I've shot it. I did have to drift the front sight over about a millimeter, uh, which, you know, that's expected. I mean, they do go through some production. But this does come with Warren sights. Very, very nice. Blacked out front. White dot. Or black, blacked out rear. What am I saying? White dot front. Got a loaded chamber indicator, striker indicator, so when you pull the trigger, it goes away. Um, the trigger on this has been excellent and has only gotten better over time. So we've got a little bit of take up to the wall, trigger, reset, very, very short, very, very nice, very accurate. I do not have a trigger gauge, but my buddy does, and we put this on the trigger gauge, and it was running right about five pounds on the average. When I got it, it was about six, so it's actually over about 8,000 rounds. It's actually um, softened up a lot, a lot. So smooth. I mean, that, that feels like, like I'm not pulling anything back. It, it really does until you hit the wall. There's no grittiness, no grind. Um, 
there's no way I can't I can't hear it sitting here so I know you can't hear that there's no way so what we're going to do now is we're going to disassemble and we're going to look at it so the trigger has been pulled the magazine is out of it pull these two little notches down you'll feel the slide go forward push the slide forward no need to pull back on it then I did not clean this before I started this um, I clean I don't clean my pistols every time I shoot them um, I, I leave a little bit of grime and crud in there um, I I find it uh, it tends to polish some of the surfaces and um, and smooth them out a little bit that way when I do clean them and I use lube in them I am using now this is not a paid endorsement by any means but I am using the Lucas extreme duty gun oil I really like this stuff it sticks, it stays, it lasts for an entire day about playing at the range or shooting at any events that I'm currently involved in, which hopefully I'll get some videos of uh, the next IDPA and my very first, my very first three gun event, which I'm in training for right now. I've got some more equipment coming in, but this does have a single guide spring, flat wound, very nice steel guide rod very very nice fully supported chamber in the barrel nice polished feed ramp that was stock that came stock it's got a little crud on there that'll clean right off just from shooting it it's just from shooting it but the barrel wear as you notice on there we've got some wear spots on the barrel that is from thousands of rounds there's no way to duplicate that unless you've shot this thousands of rounds i don't mind the barrel barrel wear on it barrel wear i'll say that 10 times really fast rifling in it is excellent 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 i i'm thoroughly impressed you know canic is a 9001 iso certified facility for aerospace engineering, firearms. These canics are used in the Turkish military, Turkish police. They're used where they're made. Unlike some other brands of origin, you know, the countries choose not to use their brands for one reason or another, whether it's cost, reliability, serviceability. Um, these magazines are very free dropping. That just spits right out in your hand. That's an empty magazine. When it's full, it's even faster. It's got a not very large magazine release on it, magazine release button. It is reversible. It is not reversible for slide stop or release. But I do enjoy it. I've got a couple friends who do shoot left-handed who have no problem shooting this gun no problem at all this is a target from this pistol that i do use on my bench every now and then because well i'm proud of the pistol this was done at about 15 yards um, and I, I did this target within a month of having the pistol so the target's been scuffed around a little bit laid around and i use it for this and that and the other for videos pictures um, this is in the flat dark earth. They do also offer the black. Um, it is a Cerakote finish. Uh, claims to be a phosphate underneath of the Cerakote to help in ad adhesion of the Cerakote. Um, I've got a couple small wear spots on it from holstering it. I do shoot this in IDPA competition now. And uh, I've got a SFX, which is the competition model of this gun that I'll be using in three gun, which I'm expecting in any day now. My, my FFL dealer had to order it for me. My FFL dealer does sponsor me with cost on all, all weapons and 10% over cost on anything else I need. And that is an entry level sponsorship for competition shooting. I'm very grateful for it because it does save me a lot of money in the end product, especially buying new pistols, gun belts, holsters, mag holsters, 
in anything else I may need for IDPA or three gun competition. So this is a long term review of the Canic TP9 SF full size. SF does stand for Special Forces according to Sentry Arms and Canic themselves. Now we pronounce it Canic. In Turkey they pronounce it Janic. Well they don't pronounce Turkey the way we do either. I believe it's Turkai. It's not Turkey. But it's just the way our English language works compared to their language. Which is fine. So we're going to call this the Canic. Very, very pleased with this firearm. I would highly recommend going out and getting one. I've seen online that they're claiming a severe, severe duty upgrade, which has been led over from Sig Sauer and people beating on their guns with a hammer. Let's see. I'm not going to beat on my gun with a hammer. A hammer has usages. Beating on firearms is not one of them unless you're looking to destroy a firearm. So that's not going to happen with me. I'm, I'm not going to take a hammer and smack the back of my pistol trying to get it to go off. It's just not going to happen. I have accidentally dropped this pistol a few times in the year and a half. I've had it through learning new holsters, new techniques, and I have not had a problem with it. It has not discharged under dropping of it. Um, if it did, it would not be in my possession anymore, and I would not be promoting or talking about this brand of firearm, period. I've got morals, and I stand by them. If a company or a product is bad, whether it's morals or merchandise, I don't use them. I cease to involve them in my life, and I step on. So if I was having problems with any manufacturer pistol, it gets chucked out right away. And you, know, you can bob it out, you can chuck it out, you can Charlie it out, you can whatever it out, but it's got to get out. No reason to keep it anymore. I'm just very, very pleased with this pistol. Cannot say enough good about it. I just can't. There, there's just the reliability for me. My experiences with, with the Canic brand has been phenomenal. Phenomenal. So, I'm going to wrap up this, uh, this long-term review of my Canic TP9 SF. I'm going to say this is Just Gene 83 coming to you with reloading from the hot pot. <sighs> now we do that. That's how we do it. <laughs> so, I want you all to have a good, safe day. Enjoy life and live it to the fullest. Thank you for watching.